Uh, Next app had some very different challenges uh, with regard to um, accessing data, transferring data across various semi-permeable membranes up through different pipes. Um, I'm going to let them talk about it, uh, but uh, it really reminds me of how every single application uh, presents interesting kind of architectures that you may have never thought of before or had to figure out until that particular problem domain comes up. Hi, my name is Manika Sampath, and these are my team members, Alex Karolanian, Daniel Lowe, and Eric Yang, and we are here to present to you Superfriend. Superfriend is a contact management application that allows you to be a better friend. Um, so who here has ever fallen out of touch with someone for no good reason other than the busyness of life? Right, that's a lot of people. So. With Superfriend, you won't have that problem. Um, it helps you stay in touch with friends, family, coworkers, simply by sending you gentle notifications uh, whenever it's time to get back in touch, whenever it's been too long. So with Superfriend, you choose which of your contacts you'd like to track, and the app does the rest. It even shows you what you last spoke about, when it was, and how long ago it was. Um, and it's also accessible through mobile, so no matter where you are, you can be a better friend. So now I'm going to hand the mic off to Alex, who's going to show you how to use the app. Thanks, Manika. So I've formed a lot of great friendships with all my classmates over the last three months, and I want to make sure that we continue to stay in touch. So let's do that. First thing is that we come to the landing page, which represents Superfriend's purpose visually. And then once we click on that, we're taken to the user login page. I can log in with Google or with my own password, and I'm taken to the user profile page. And next, we're going to want to sync our contacts. We do that uh, by clicking the sync message and sync contact buttons, and those extract our contacts from our iMessage database, which is located on our desktop. Uh, from there, we're taken to the contact page, and we can search using a filterable search and select the contacts we want to stay in touch with the most and add them to our track view. Once we're on a track view, we get a more detailed view of our relationships, including the most recent time we've spoken, the latest message, an image, and a message to reach out to um, um, the last, in case we haven't spoken to someone recently. And finally, we can click on a profile page, and we're taken to the user's prof uh, the contact's profile image, and uh, we have more information about their relationship. And um, that's pretty much it. And to discuss some technical challenges that we've had in developing the app, I'm going to pass the mic to Eric. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so in developing the app, we ran into two big technical challenges. Uh, the first one was that there isn't an iMessage uh, API that easily gives us the chat history and the contact data that we want to analyze. So where is all that data and how do we access it? And the second problem is that um, once we have the data, how do we make it so that our users can view it on their mobile devices in a meaningful way? So to, ch so to tackle the first challenge, um, we actually noticed that in all of our laptops were two databases. The first is a chat DB and the second is an address book DB that has the chat history and the context data that we need. So then how do we um, access it? Um, Knowing that web apps ha live in their own environments and can't easily access file systems in your, in your local drive, we decided to use Electron, which is a JavaScript framework for native desktop apps. Now, using Electron, we were able to uh, run various node processes that we were able to reach into those databases, uh, pull the, uh, the data that we wanted, format it into JSON so that they're now ready to be used by any web app. Um, so now that we have the data, um, we wanted to now make sure to connect the data to our mobile devices. And to further discuss that in detail, I'll pass the mic to Dan. Thanks, Eric. Right, so we have all the information on the local hard drive, but our web app can't see it from a mobile device. So to solve this problem, we're going to need a remote server. But this introduced some interesting challenges, such as doing proper authentication and communicating with that remote server securely. So to, to address this, we decided the best approach would be to split our application into two components. First, all of the normal uh, data retrieval from the local database is still handled by our desktop application. It pulls all the information up and stores it and transforms it in the way that we need it to be. But to interact with the remote server, we extracted the guts and business logic 
of the application, all the UI and everything of that, the essence of it, and deployed it remotely to a remote server. So now it can talk to our remote database securely and with proper authentication, and to enable that new web app to communicate with the desktop, we have to embed it inside that window as an iframe. So now the desktop can get information, send it to the iframe, which is our remote web app, and then that can stay updated so users can get the latest and greatest on their contacts and use the device anywhere they want on their mobile phones. So to wrap things up, I'll hand it back over to Manika. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, so we had a lot of fun making this app. We certainly faced several challenges, especially dealing with so much data. Um, but we were really excited to bring to you an app that actually helps us all uh, have better relationships with one another. Um, and we invite you to check out our app on superfriend.herokuapp.com. And thank you so much for seeing this presentation. When was the last time we spoke, Gabe? Um, I'm not, so I, you know, I um, actually, actually it, it, it was pretty recently, but I think that this well, problem, it was, last <laughs> <week>. <laughs> yeah, it was very recently, um, but th this problem is definitely a very real one. We get, uh, you know, we get bogged down by our busy lives and, and forget about the people that we really love. And, and so um, I love this project. I think, um, I think that I'm sure the team themselves will benefit a lot from it and, and I would love to use it. Um, I love the way they combined a, uh, a, a complex and simple technical problem with a real kind of real world problem. Yeah, yeah. and I love how they hacked uh, contacts.db. That's always like a tempting file to find on a person's computer. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Open source that. Um, and the, the fact that they did it in such a way that it, it ends up being very seamless and from the user's perspective, there's not a whole lot of complex steps where it's like, and now export this CSV and upload it to our server yourself and things like that. They handle all of those hurdles and they do it in a way that if you just looked at the app, you wouldn't know about it. Um, so that's pretty great.